Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to the channel. We're going run and gun, we're going quick. The sun is rising. We are at Viking Lodge in Northern Manitoba and we're going lake trout fishing. We're using the 10 inch Ion Alpha. By the time you see this video, this auger will be released. It's a beast, I'll tell you. We're gonna pop up the shack because it is just so windy. So since it's so windy, I don't wanna lose the shack. I'm gonna peg down a quarter very soon. Here we got Matt and Polly owners coming. Um, will you be able to give me a hand just throwing some pegs in there? I'm gonna lose that shack. Okay, you're good, thank you. Oh yeah, I see a laker down there right now. Yeah. Come on. Wow. All right, Paul's hooked up. His bait didn't even hit the bottom. Oh man. Oh, come on. Oh. We got Paul, we got Matt, owners of Viking. They're taking me laker fishing this morning. You can see another laker looking at their laker that he's got hooked. Oh man, there's like two or three trout down there right now. I see three, four trout. Just a single hook. Oh, that's a nice trout. Sweet. Good job. You wanna hold them up? Beautiful, good start to the day. Nice. Good job, Paul. Ridiculous, ridiculous. I gotta get going. Yeah, just holler if you hook one. All right, we need to get down there. We just need to tie on a jig. And I got something new I'm trying out from Frostbite. It's called the head spin jig. I'm not sure what size. I'll probably use a smaller size. Need to pinch the barb. I'll show you all about it, but I'm gonna catch a fish first. And for plastic, we're gonna use a derby slayer, I think. Might go bigger, depending on how aggressive the fish are, but fishing it on a Mr. Big by Frostbite. It's just screaming winds out there. All right, we're gonna drop down. No meat on here yet. I just wanna get things rocking and rolling. It's good to be back in Northern Manitoba. I came right at the start of the ice season, and now it is the end, end of my season. We've been going hard. You know what, I don't do that much lake trout fishing. Not as much as I should. As I mentioned, we were at Viking Lodge. So there's the Cranberry Lakes, which we're fishing today, but as well, just on the other side of the road is Athapap. And I think some people don't know that, you know, Viking Lodge is just a groomed sled trail ride from Athapap, which is th this big fish mecca. Not easy to fish. I've been humbled there. I've also seen big fish there with my boy Clayton. He's caught a ton of giants there. But the cool thing is one side of the road, you're fishing numbers. There's big fish, there's 40 inch trout in the cranberries, but you go to the other side of the lake and you're fishing Athapap. So if you want to come get some numbers, which hopefully we're going to see today, then stay right on the chain. And the cool thing is you can catch them a little bit shallower here too on the cranberries. We're in 25 feet. I'm going to drop a little chum down. Oh, there's a fish. There's a trout, come on. Here we go, here we go. We're on! That did not take long. Woohoohoo! So good. Oh, I lost him! Oh man, I had one. Oh, that was sweet. Didn't even need the chum, apparently. I'm gonna show you guys what I'm using before we get too deep into the action. So it's called a head spin. It's got a prop on the front of it and it has just amazing action in the water. And we got the fluke, no bait on it. And just like, even when you're just barely moving, I'll show you some of the other features yet, but after losing that one, I wanna get back down. You can see that chum slick dropping down on the live scope. And that's just, yeah, that's a beak and they're gonna smell that. They're gonna see it. I mean, obviously it wasn't necessary considering Paul caught one already and I'm just gonna make sure my deucer's good. Today we're using the new LVS 34 from LiveScope and it's pretty sweet for laker fishing because it just works a little better in deeper water. That was probably one of the biggest notice noticeable changes, differences compared to the 32. I'm using the Summit Pole and Shuttle. You're on? Nice. They're on. That's on. So this is a pretty quick start to the day. It's just that easy. Chicken a minnow, you're walleye fishing. Nice fish. Beauty. Guys, I've been to Viking Lodge probably, I probably filmed a Viking Lodge actually more than any other outfitters. And Matt and Paul are just such awesome people, you know? I come for the fishing, but I also come for the people, and they're good people. So yeah, we're fishing, extended point off an island, very classic laker spot. You can definitely catch walleyes here too, fish in this depth. Yeah, the fish are cruising. 
they're moving. These lake trout don't really sit still. So when you see them come in, they normally have some speed to them. Sometimes they cruise right by, sometimes they come in and just destroy your bait. But yeah, we're fishing off the tip of the point. I'm on some rock. I think the other guys, if they're a little further out, they're probably on the mud where it bottoms out. But a big thing, you know, about laker fishing versus if I was walleye fishing right now is I'm fishing the whole column. So I'm dropping down, chicken near the bottom a little bit. And this is the same if you're laker fishing in 20 feet of water, laker fishing in 60 feet of water. You can reel up, chick halfway through the column. That last one I lost was halfway up, jig up. They'll sometimes eat it right under the ice, opening that bale. But always like aware of what's going on because when they streak up sometimes, even with live scope, they can just be there all of a sudden and you don't really have too much time to react. Clearwater, Athapap, those two probably got the most publicity in Manitoba for drive to lake shore destinations. But sometimes action. A lot of people haven't caught lake shore through the ice and it can, it can be discouraging. You know, I, I'm not saying don't go to those lakes because I go there and stick it out and that's where you're, that's where you're gonna catch a 45 inch laker. You guys on? Paul's on. Can't keep up with these guys. Sun glistening, lake trout popping. Oh, look at that grab. So that's about average size, like 30. Wow, they are. That's a great average. Nice fish. That one needs to fatten up a little bit though. <laughs> there he goes. Swimming back down. Back into the cave. Oh, there's a fish down there. There was a fish down there, so they're near the bottom. Here he comes. Oh, here he comes. Look at this. See him on the right? There might be another one. Oh, look at this other one coming in. Come on. That other one disappeared that was coming in on the right, but there are some rocks. On again? Come on! How's the guy supposed to fish? He's off? Lost him. Yeah, I was just marking one. Man, this is some fast fishing. I don't think there's a species through the ice that it's more fun to have live scope for because you can see these fish just come screaming in. Oh, there's one. Look at this. Look at this guy coming in. Here we go, game over. Oh, he sees the chum. Might eat it off the bottom. He was coming in halfway and then he went down to the bottom. Good sign though, there's still some trout around. I've been fishing for half an hour. The boys have caught three, I lost one. Well, they lost one or two as well. So we're off to a pretty good start. We're just planning to fish for a couple hours this morning. Quick little sunrise session. You're on? Nice. These guys are smoking me. He crushed it. You guys in the eight inch hole, what if you get a monster? We're gonna be drilling a second. What is this? Number four for you guys? Five? Nice fish, buddy. Nothing wrong with that. When they come rocketing up like that. From the bottom. She's gone. Nice. Maybe those guys deserve the fish because they're the, the ones champing it out, fishing outside. So I'm using anywhere from, I mean, laker fishing in general, anywhere from the lightest head probably goes 20 pound braid um, up to, you know, 50, 60 for a real big one if you're laying a big bait on the bottom. This is 30, this one's 20. Um, and then fluorocarbon leader, depending on the size of fish. I mean, the lightest I'd go is probably like 12 to 16. And then a lot of times probably closer to 20 to 30 pound fluoro. It's that clear section. The trout can be spooky, even though they're big predators. I've seen it with underwater cameras that they can be, you know, they can see your line and they pick every other bait off the bottom before they pick up yours. Definitely nice to have that floral leader. And then you want a rod that can handle it because the thing is, if you, you can land them on a, on a lighter, you know, a panfish setup if you wanted, but the thing is you're gonna tire that fish out. You just, you should have the proper, the proper gear. So yeah, I'm using, this as a Mr. Big, this is a 43 heavy. This is my favorite Laker rod. It's got a lot of backbone. So you still get a good fight. It's not like the fish doesn't fight. It's just like, it's not turning into a half an hour, 45 minute ordeal, which just, that, that's that's no good. And it's still soft enough that it stays loaded on a fish. I use anywhere from like a 2000 to a 3000, 4000 size spinning reel somewhere in there. And it holds a lot of braid. Biggest thing is just not underpowering yourself on line and leaving hooks in the fish's mouth and all that stuff. You don't want to be laker fishing with six or eight pound monofilament. That's going to cause some issues. 
So this bait, few things I like about it. Obviously you've got the prop on the front, which is super cool. You barely have to move it and that prop spins. And the other thing, this little snap. And the thing is, you know, sometimes you have that knot and the knot slides around and maybe your bait doesn't sit hor horizontal in the water. With this clip, it just, it always wants to self level. It's got a nice strong hook. I think these will be deadly for smallies too, walleyes. Um, I think it'll be a great like Lake Winnipeg, Red River jig. And then of course, Lake Trout. I will catch one yet. Or I'll just keep filming Matt and Paul catching them. Oh, is there a fish down there? Oh, there's a fish down there. Come on. That fish is eating some of the chum off the bottom. Oh, he's eating chum off the bottom. Come on, eat, eat mine. I'm just gonna keep the line taut right now. Got him. Oh man, I just felt the lightest pickup. Not as exciting as that first strike, but we are hooked up with our first Laker of the day. It doesn't feel tiny. Oh, those are big head shakes. Oh, ho, ho. Come on, baby. Oh yeah. There we go, on the board. That took some finesse. We got a beautiful Viking Lodge Laker. And yeah, I was just pounding that in the mud. Sweet. Not a giant, but the average size here is great. Probably about 30 incher. I think that's number probably six for the team. What do you think? Six, six Lakers and it's 7.45 in the morning. That's pretty sweet. Oh, that feels good. Got the skunk out of the shack. I was worried I was doing something wrong and the other guys were just wham, 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 wham. First Laker on the head spin. Guys, it is so important when you're laker fishing to have the proper tools, uh, especially when you're bait fishing, you know, there there is the chance anytime you're fishing with bait to hook a fish deeper. Um, and a pair of long pliers, a pair of bolt cutters, they can go, you know, a long way. And it, like, the fish care is so important. These lakers are old fish. They can live for a long time. So you just, you know, try to keep that fish out of the water for a maximum of 30 seconds. Have your camera ready, have your release tools ready, your bump board. You know, have the proper gear. You do those things and fish are gonna be fine. They're gonna be caught and released many times for years to come. Time of day is just so key. Obviously, we talk about it all the time. You sleep in, you miss the window like instantly. When Paul dropped down at seven in the morning, he caught a Laker, you know? You could catch more in that first hour of the day than you could in the four hours after potentially. I got one coming in. Oh baby, oh baby. Oh, here we go, here we go. Oh, come on. Close the gap. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, that was it. Oh, man, that fish was just charged. Oh, man, that is what I wanted right there. Just a rocket ship. Woo. He didn't, like, he came 100 miles an hour, and then he kind of, like, stopped and was staring, and I was, like, at that point, I was, like, ugh. You, you want him to keep that speed up, obviously. I got him to chase a little further and he just, he bumped it, but that was fun. That was cool. Oh, he's back. He's back. Let's see if I can drop it past his face. Sometimes they like that right onto the bottom. Nice, Matt's on. The trout are snapping again, apparently. I had one just torpedo me halfway up. Really? Are we ending it with a bang? Yeah, mine came up, torpedoed it, then slowed down and then finally ate. Man, what is that? Seven now, I think. Seven. Sweet. All right, guys, we're calling it a morning. It's 10, 15. That was like three hours of Laker fishing. Seven Lakers on the ice. Matt and Paul whooped my butt. I'm okay with that, though. Um, check out Viking Lodge. Amazing walleye fishing. Amazing Laker fishing. And just across the road, by sled trail, you can be on Athapat fishing for a super monster. Great people. Great times. Thanks, guys.